Lots of RBE advocates like to emphasize and emphasize and re-emphasize the fact that you can't have infinite economic growth on a finite planet. I agree with that. However, I do disagree with the way that they keep emphasizing that because it contradicts reality and the whole resource-based economy concept is supposed to be a, a scientific concept which is supposed to be as close to reality as humanly possible. It's supposed to be as um, accurate to reality as humanly possible. I'm not sure how to say that, but anyway. Uh, when people say that there's infinite, that you can't have infinite growth on the finite planet and they disregard the virtually unlimited resources of outer space, they're making it sound as if Earth is isolated from the rest of the universe. That's not true. And there's science to back it up. And as I said before, an RB is scientifically based. Therefore, if you're an RB advocate, you're technically you're also a technically a science advocate. And therefore, you just don't decide to pick and choose which uh, scientific facts are true or not. So I say to all RB advocates, you should at least consider the reality that there are virtually unlimited resources in space and we should at least consider that even though uh, the resources of Earth are finite and that sort of thing. Um, what I really want to get, get at is the, the fact that the seemingly or virtually limitless resources of space could in principle keep the monastery system going indefinitely because the resources of space are virtually infinite so you can't have infinite growth on a finite planet but from what I can tell this solar system alone can sustain the current rate of resource consumption for millions of years so we can't just deny that and before you think I'm abandoning RBE I'm not because even though the multi-million year supply of resources that this solar system has is available it won't work it won't it won't keep the monetary system going because of a simple fact of technological unemployment so let's say that we do decide to maintain the monetary system let's say we do decide to use the unlimited or seemingly unlimited natural resources of outer space Yep, those resources will remain for a very long time, but the economy won't because of technological unemployment. Technological unemployment is going to kill the monetary system, not the uh, resource problem, not the resources, not the limited resources. Because, as I've said so many times before, the resources of the solar system could probably sustain the current rate of consumption for millions of years, but technological unemployment is going to uh, col potentially collapse the economy before then or even if you factor in just earth resources if you just use earth resources economic economic I mean technological unemployment is going to collapse the economy long before earth's resources run out so the real problem is not finite resources but technological unemployment so I want people to remember that uh, okay now for the main thing uh, how uh, asteroid mining can affect an RBE, how it can be used in an RBE. Um, hmm. I guess I might as well get to the point. And the point is that Peter Diamandis, one of the founders of Planetary Resources, one of the new asteroid mining companies that was just founded, seems to be a closet RBE advocate. I remember seeing a video of his uh, probably a year ago or so where he mention a lot of pro RBE sentiments um, let's see yeah I do remember him saying something that something to the effect that in the future not everybody will need to work or something to that effect um, or more specifically he's talking about his recent book abundance about how um, asteroid mining could create an abundance of resources for earth yeah I can totally dig that uh, another thing about the Amandis is that he's buddies with Federico Pistono, who is a major RBE advocate, so it looks like he probably, the Diamantis probably knows about the RBE concept anyway, so I'm guessing that he 
might be the Amandus, that is, might be, uh, might have started or helped start the Astro, had started as the Astro Mining Company, or the Astro Mining Company is involved with, possibly to help the transition to a new resource based economy happen or get the transition, make the transition less of a, less of a problem that, than less of a problem, let's say that. Uh, hmm. Yep, that's my guess. I'm assuming that he's he's that the man is supporting is supporting RBE and Astro Mining might have some some role in it. I don't know the details. I'm just guessing. So I'm going to assume that that's what it is. Okay, let's say that there is a resource-based economy and it's working pretty well. Uh, how can Asteroid Mining help with that? Well, um, one thing that could help, one way it could help is to supplement uh, certain, well not supplement, I guess supplement is a word, but I'm not going to use that. I'll say, it's, you know, okay, Asteroid Mining could be used to help uh, with the uh, resource shortages. That's what, the, that's what I'm going to get. Could help with resource shortages. So there's a shortage of certain resources on Earth that are needed. Need them off an asteroid. And with there being millions of asteroids in this solar system, just a handful of those asteroids could provide thousands of years worth of resources for Earth. And I'll just on that too. But uh, chances are that an RBE will be so energy and resource efficient that um, space resources might not necessarily be needed for Earth. But in the event that they are needed for Earth, they'll be available. Um, but the more interesting thing about asteroid mining and the RPE is, to, is something I'd like to do if I were already living in an RPE, and that is to start my own space program. Now, if I were in an RPE and I started my own space program, I would, of course, need to use Earth resources to get into space. But once I'm in space, I will use the virtually unlimited resources of space to expand my space program. I mean, why, why the frack not? I mean, if I'm in space, I might as well use the, the virtually limitless resources there. And uh, since an RBE is, has a huge focus on energy and resource efficiency, um, more, more specifically for Earth, then the, it shouldn't be a problem, I guess. Yeah, that's what that's the Uh Yeah. Um, about my space program. So, as I said before, I'll use Earth resources to get into space. Once I'm in space, I use space resources. If I want to, if I want to build a moon base, I can use mostly lunar resources. Mars base, mostly Martian resources. And with the resources of space being so vast, I can do some wild and crazy stuff, like maybe build a full-size replica of the Earth Alliance space station, Babylon 5. Why not? I mean, there's a guy who wants to build a full-size Starship Enterprise. I could build a full-size Babylon 5. But since I'm already Space 1999 fan, maybe I should build a full-size Moonbase Alpha. Yeah, that could be good. But I like to... I would actually prefer to build Eagle Transporter spacecraft. But um, Eagle Transporter spacecraft aren't really that big. Um, so it won't really won't be much of a resource drain. Well, technically, let's not say resource drain, because as I said so many times before, virtually limitless resources in space. But let's just say it'll be easy, let's say Eagles would be easier to build than Moon Base Alpha or Babylon 5 or Enterprise. Hmm. Yeah. I think I might have to stop here because my notes are ending and um, I'm kind of not sure what else to say. Um, might as well bring up other asteroid binding and resource-based economy issues later if I so choose. And with that being the case, see you later, Ralph Nader.